Hey there, and thanks for joining us on Game Points, our weekly get together. We talk about the past weeks in gaming news. Uh, I am, as always, your host, Stephen Brown. Joining me today, our esports correspondent, Sean Brown. Give a hey, Sean. And Hello. across from him is David Smith. How you doing today, David? Swell. What's going on, buddy? Oh, not much. Uh, rec- still recovering a bit from me three weeks, so news is a bit slow today. However, fortunately, Warner Brothers was kind enough to offer me up our first topic on a silver fucking platter, and that uh-huh. is the disaster that is known as Batman Arkham Knight on the PC. Uh, have any of you guys taken a look at the problems that this game has so far? Um, of, of the I've, many, many problems it has? Yes. I, I think I read all the articles. Good. <laughs> what, what, what's your guys' take on on exactly what happened with this? How do you not get past like? I just don't know how you release a game like this. That did you even beta test it? No, that's a. It's definitely a good point. That's definitely something going around a lot. Uh, for those who might not know, uh, when the, P, the if you had the PlayStation Four version, the Xbox One version of Arkham Knight, you're solid. It's a great game, and Polygon gave it a ten out of ten. It's been getting nine nine fives everywhere. But if you got the PC version, you're fucked. Uh, and we'll, we'll get into it in all in a bit. But just to show you how upset people are, within hours of the game launching on Steam. They had this is less than twelve hours that was launched. They had almost four thousand reviews, making it mostly negative. Now it takes a lot to make something mostly negative on Steam. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of brigading votes, but this case it definitely deserves it. Now, yeah. to get into exactly everything about Arkham Knight, we're going to have to go on kind of a long journey because a lot of steps happened to create this perfect storm that was this. Uh, first off, it started It started about a week or so before the game launched, when Warner Brothers just stealthily updates the minimum recommendations for the game. That was great. So, do, do you guys happen to know what that means? What, what does that say to you? It says they it lied. Basically they means that it. if you were really excited about Arkham Knight, because normally they have game hardware requirements released... I want to say a couple months before the game yes. comes out in, in normal fashion. So it's like, oh, cool, I can run this. I can run it at minimum, but I can run this. Maybe I'll throw some cash that way and pick up pick up Batman. Because, I mean, even though we don't like pre-orders, there are still people that do it. That's just part of the industry. And then all of a sudden, you have this whole group of people that are like, oh, we can't play the game anymore. There's no reason for us to buy this shit. Because yeah. they just upped the requirements, and this game is not going to run for me. And here's my problem with them doing it when they did. That means Warner Brothers knew that this was a hot, steaming piece of shit. Mm -hmm. And they tried to cover their ass at the last second, days before it launches, but months after they've been pushing it. Oh, yeah. Because this game had a big release. The marketing budget for this game is ridiculous. They had enough to afford nine channels on the TV spot. (laughs) Yeah. Fucking constant TV commercials, posters everywhere like bus board ads just it was ridiculous it was everywhere long story short the game launched on pc and it was just fucking borked uh textures were taken out that were on the playstation 4 there were audio glitches missing textures dropped frame rates locked at 30 fps and let me uh, me tell you the bullshit about that the game itself was locked at 30 frames per second but if you use the benchmarking tool at the beginning you know how computer games usually come with like this benchmarking option thing you click that and it'll show you it running in 60. So the game Classic. can run in 60, but they deliberately locked it at 30 with no way to change that unless it go into an IN file because they knew that it wouldn't fucking work. Okay, are you... You guys, I'm sure, remember when people were fucking pissed, I want to say two years ago, about, like, Xbox One game, PS4 games coming out at 30 FPS. Yes. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, it's, it's 2013, it's too late to have 30 fps games this is fast forward two years and a triple a pc release of a game which definitively you should be the best looking best playing master race yada yada whatever the fuck you want to say about it it should still look better than everything else potentially is capped at 30 not only that but the the pc version looks worse than the playstation 4 version even if you're running everything at max and have a god beastly computer that no one else can afford uh, rain slick textures are taken off. All the NVIDIA GameWorks stuff 
looks better on the PlayStation 4, and it's not even a piece that's meant for PC exclusive stuff. They've deliberately taken stuff out for this fucking port. I find it funny that you could, when if you bought a new NVIDIA card, it came with <laughs> Batman Arkham Knight. Yeah, well, and guess Arkham what? Knight... Your new NVIDIA card can't run fucking Arkham Knight. Yeah, no, it can't. Uh, Yours can't. There are people who have, like, seriously, like, SLI-linked Titans who are benchmarking yeah. this on YouTube and still having a plethora of problems. Yeah. It's ridiculous. But, yeah, uh, Batman released, and, I mean, well, fucking look at it. It's just a disaster. And when this came out, the negative backlash to it was so fucking intense that WB actually pulled the game from Steam, which is admittedly pretty unprecedented. Like, they just stopped yeah. selling it. They pulled it completely at least, off. At least they did to be fair, that. They, they did that because of the amount of Steam fucking refunds. We're going to get yeah. that. Yeah, we'll get that in a second. There are two things I want to bring up about that, though. One, the season pass is still fucking being sold. Still. Which is hilarious. Why would you buy that? You can't even play the game right now. And two, my concern is is that because I'm so fucking cynical when it comes to like I my fucking Twitter is capitalist pig. I'm like as much free market as you get, but I've become so fucking cynical when it comes to big corporations and games that I keep thinking that they might have done this so that way when they eventually re release it, they might have a chance to wipe away all the user negative reviews and start fresh. Oh, because it's like a new game on Steam at that yep. point. So they'd start all over. That's gonna just gonna get hammered way more. I, I hope if you think there's enough, there's enough angry that. people on the internet. I mean, think of when fucking Reddit or 4chan or somebody get mad at anything, and you go look at that that game or that movie or whatever's like Metacritic or review, and it's just in the ground. Everyone hates it. Zug Warrior and, V2, shout out to you. Thank you for joining the chat, by the way. Oh, fuck that guy. <laughs> it's like the. <laughs> I like that picture on the internet. Like, the picture on the internet describes what's going to happen to them like perfectly, where it's a picture of Aramir from um, Lord of the Rings, the King of Rohan. <laughs> it's like, you have no power here. Because <laughs> like, yeah. they're totally going to get bashed on the internet. There's nothing but they can do it, about it. The internet never forgives and never forgets. Although, we say that, and keep in mind, this is the same company that gave us Arkham Origins last year. Oh, and Which Mortal had Kombat. game-breaking bugs that they never fixed in fact they uh they announced that oh, no actually, we're not going to address arkham origins problems anymore we're going to focus on dlc instead that was actually a good what? story but remember the whole reason we were optimistic about this game is because it's actually a rocksteady game but the problem i don't believe lies in rocksteady I, i'm pretty sure it's fucking wb this was uh, think of the shit show that was mortal kombat yes like, uh, the most recent example i can think of a WB game and the fact that that game was shit when it came out. I'm not going to say what? Rocksteady is blameless in this. However, the PC port was outsourced to a third company. Called, I was I, just going to say, because I can't it, remember that's the, the name. Really important part to remember that this isn't just some straight Rocksteady fucked it up. They got Aliens Colonial Marined. Yeah, no, this is bad. This is horrible. In fact, a uh, there is like this weird mini mini documentary floating around on YouTube talking about the behind the scenes of the development of this, and I actually have that clip right here. And this is what went on in the development at the uh, other studio as I logged the wrong thing, and now I'm just stumbling. Ah, fuck it. Joke went bad. I feel Joke like Aliens <laughs> Full of Marines is the 11th plague. I'd like to apologize for that poorly timed gif. The one that you saw earlier was supposed to be replaced with one with him running the bomb on his head. But you know what? Fuck it. Technically, let's just happen. No, dude. That was actually pretty accurate to what's going on. <laughs> we can't even make fun of it properly because it's too fucked up. Yeah. Like, it, the, the, the damage this game has caused to the internet and just PCs in general has mm -hmm. translated into the show. Do you hear that, Warner Brothers? I am having a harder time running this shit show because your game exists. Harsh. We're do, but, we're, it's really an homage to Warner Brothers. <laughs> well, hopefully we're actually streaming in a reasonable frame rate and we're not dropping down to 10. Yes, less than 10. Single digit frames were being reported from people when they were entering the Batmobile on high end machines. I'm not even talking like the minimum rec standards. I'm talking like they have 980s SLI hooked up in their computer and they're running <laughs> i7 processors. So oh, I, I um, like their optimization releases. They're like, oh, you guys are having some issues. Here are our recommendations. Put everything on ball sack mode. Like, put everything on absolute ungodly low. That's right. Keep they, the cap to 30 FPS. They did release that. Because that was an that. actual release they had. Yes. 
So, they just told everybody to turn the graphics down. That's how you fix it. You turn it down. <laughs> even 60 Thanks. frames per second is getting like to the point where it's getting outdated now. So I, I just don't. 60 frames is the know. bare minimum expectation on PC these days, people. You spend a thousand bucks on a gaming PC on the medium end. I don't want to say the low end, but on the medium end, fucking I demand 60 frames per second. That's that's fucking basic logic at this point. 60 frames at 1080p. Yes. In addition, when I open up your options menu in the graphics and you only give me detail level, low or normal. Dude, and that's anti-aliasing the on or off. Yeah. They don't give me anti-aliasing 2, 4, 8, nope. uh, was F F S A A Fry linear or whatever. Because people like... Topic. Sometimes that shit doesn't work for people, so they need the ability to find the one that works for the best. Uh, you put one of them up. I can't remember which one it is, but it makes everyone look kind of like Vaseline was smeared on it sometimes on some rigs. You need to be able to detail that shit because it's not a PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Everyone is different, and they need to be able to have the options to tweak it to their best functionality. This is basic PC gaming, people. Come the fuck on. I'd rather you just not fucking release it on PC. That's another reason why you're seeing a lot more companies release things on PC and port them to consoles. Rather than the other way around. Well, they're also more similar yeah. now than they ever have been before. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is only part of the shit show that happened. You have the buggy game that should never have even been fucking released. Good on Warner Brothers for pulling, for pulling it off sale, but it shouldn't have even fucking released in this state because they knew. They knew how fucked up it was, and we'll get to one of the reasons why I think they did it here in a second. But you also had this video that was on NVIDIA's official site that came out. Oh my god, the fucking GameWorks video. The game, yeah, it was a GameWorks video. It's also affectionately known at this point as Chipmunk Gate because if you watch this video around the 24 second mark or so, you hear their voices really high sped up and very high pitched. Uh, now, Neil Gaff has a giant thread on this if you want to go take a look at Neil Gaff, and there are possibly valid technical reasons why that could be. However, it definitely looks like all they did was take some footage to it and then sped it up to make it look like it was running at 60 frames a second. Which is so we're awesome. doing it. It's a good now, plan. The, the, it's here's the thing. Even if there are legitimate technical reasons, even if it was actually running at sixty frames per second, and there's some reason why the recording of the video made the voices high pitched, you're still fucking false advertising me because you're selling me a video for a game. You want me to buy this game that's running at sixty frames per second, and the fucking thing is capped at thirty. It looks like that scene from The Hobbit where he's being chased and he's got the little rabbit cart. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Where it looks like they just deliberately put, like, a fast-forward on it. Yeah. But, yeah, e even if there, even if that video was legitimately captured with you taking all the gates off and everything like that, and the jury's still on if it was or not, or if it was actually captured and they doctored it up to make it look better, you're still advertising me something, once again, at 60 frames a second, that Warner Brothers themselves has said cannot handle 60 frames a second. Keep it at 30. That, you that, know what? That's blatant false advertising. That's the a funny thing is, switch. I, I think it finally happened. I think we're seeing marketing materials and advertisements for a game that's on PC, but they're using like the PS4 fucking version for it. In reverse of everything ever. I wouldn't be surprised. Where because you have you know, be... new game consoles and they show PC footage to make it look good. No, we're doing the opposite. One of the... PC version and so shit, we're, we're showing you the console. One of my favorite uh, vid uh, videos about that was that at an E3 a couple years ago, uh, and I want to say it was when Cliff Polisinski was still with Epic Games, and he was showing either Gears of War 1 or Gears of War 2. And they have this demo set up, and it's running on a 360. And he's like, oh, no, it's not running on 360. Check this out. And he opens up the cabinet underneath, and there's this high-end PC down there. And the PR reps freak the fuck out. We're seeing this the opposite now, like you were saying, where they take the PS4 version and just stream it on there. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. The other, the other big thing that's really irking me is the fact that this game is still being advertised to sin like Adver the marketing oh, budget yeah yeah the the, the the marketing budget was so high that there's still just ads every fucking where for this game buy it now get it on your system well, blah 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 i'm fine I with can't. that because it does run on the ps4 and xbox one does fine i'm not asking for them to pull all their advertising off on it but my, my, my big bugaboo is still they knew this was broken. They released it anyways because they got away with it once when they released Arkham Origins, as we talked about. It was fucking busted, and they just said, fuck it, we're not doing any more patch support, we're just going to make DLC. And the only reason, the absolute only reason why this was pulled was because of Steam refunds. Yep, because everyone's just going to get their money back. 
and hammer the game into the ground, and then no one's going to buy it until it's on sale for 20 bucks. Exactly. And you know why this was the only reason? Because when they pulled the fucking uh, game from Steam, Warner Brothers on a blog, blog post, which will, the, the link to the blog post will be posted on the YouTube video of this later on, had a quote on that that said, we take these issues very seriously and therefore decided to spend future game sales of the PC version while we work to address these issues to satisfy our quality standards. Bullshit. Your quality standards didn't apply when you released Arkham Origins. They don't apply now, and the only reason why you fucking pulled it is because of the mass amount of Steam refunds you've been getting on there, and now you have to do public uh, fucking PR spin to keep it from going. You are fucking lying to me, War of the Brothers. You have well, no I quality standards. I'm going back directly, because for me, it's it's the Colonial Marines issue. Except for now there's Steam refunds. So they had to do something drastic and just pull a complete other thing. Otherwise, this game would do what that game. You know how much fucking Colonial Marines is now? It's like $2.50. And there's still nobody buying it, because that game is shit. Yeah. The, the, it's just, that whole quality of a standards thing is so fucking disingenuous because they didn't pull it for that. They pulled it because they didn't want people buying it, rushing to try to play it in 72 hours if it ran on their system. Uh, I will fully admit, it runs rather competently on my system. I am in the vast minority of that, though, and they don't want people like me getting it, beating it, and then returning it. They did it to save their own fucking pocketbook, not out of some deep obligation because our quality means something. If your fucking quality meant something, you would have done this fucking two to three years ago when you started having these major ship it now, fix it later mentality. But no, you fucking decide to do this because now the consumer can hit you directly into Wallabook. So go fuck off, Warner Brothers. I'm also God damn! And you know, the, the, as always, it's never... The bugs that really get me upset. I don't get me wrong. I'm I'd be upset over it if it, it being launched in this state. It's the fucking spin they try pulling on it in the end because you're fucking lying to me at this point. You send me something broken, just refund me my money and wish me a good day. But when you try to spin it in such a way that makes it sound like, oh, we're really sorry and we regret to inform you that this doesn't work this way, that is such bullshit because you knew this was busted before you released it you launched it anyway hoping people would fucking swallow it and then you went oh shit people can return things now i don't yeah. understand <sighs> how they wouldn't have done more qa on it though they did like they, they did they just didn't care like that's the only acceptable answer is that they saw how big of a fucking clusterfuck this and went fuck it just launch it anyways They know, literally man. knew this was busted. It, it's, it's fucked very, up. It's very upsetting. Sorry, I keep cutting you off because I'm all hyped up now. I gotcha. WB's shit. We're all fucking mad. They ruined the third game in the Batman franchise, and I'm also upset because I was actually really fucking excited for this game. Sean, you wanted to add anything to it? Nope. <laughs> all right. And here, uh, after all said and done, here's what's the really annoying fucking thing. This is actually the best story in any of the Arkham games so far. Yeah, it's, well, fuck you. Read a book. <laughs> it's, you can read it's, a book at 60 frames a second. The story itself is amazing. It's like Dark Knight Return, the, the, the Frank Miller comic. It's like that level of good. You can yeah. read a book at like a ridiculous amount of frames per second because the human high is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for bringing that back real quick. So, Warner Brothers... Horrible. Fuck you. Yes, requirement. We do need a Warner Brothers frog emote. Uh, so, are, like, is our background going to change to columns? Like, columns the show likes, and then, like, column A would be the sh like things the show likes, and then column B would be the things the show hates. And column A would be, like... And column B it's... would be, like, just, like, Warner <laughs> Brothers Nintendo. <laughs> Yay. I get it now. That was a audio joke. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we do need to change the background eventually. So, the Warner Brothers thing was by far the biggest news that came out. However, it wasn't the only customer fuckage going on last week. Uh, the second big story that we're going to talk about is Destiny and how poorly received an interview was over the Tanking King pricing. Now, what do you got? First off, before we get into it, what do you guys think about forty bucks for the Tanking King? Fuck that. If it has, like, a brand new map and everything, like a new explorable planet, 
it's reasonable because that's what most expansions cost when they come out. But from what I hear, like that's not in there yet or anything. So uh, it's well, overpriced. the Tech King, from my understanding, does have what you were saying on there. And some people were kind of upset that thought it was high price, but that really isn't the center of the controversy. What happened was is that in an interview with Eurogamer, one of the cre- uh, the creative director of Destiny, Luke Smith, uh, during this inter- Eurogamer interview, was asked about the pricing of it, and he was trying to justify it. And you know, you should just go take a look at it uh, because it goes on. I-, I highly recommend everyone go take a read at it and just take a look at it because it's he comes funny. off he comes off as an ass. He's not an ass. He's fucking just total dick. Like he's he's way he's way beyond ass. He's yeah. dick. The, my, my slightly th- different. There's one quote that sums it all up real quick, and toward the end of it, he just simply uh, he was being asked about, hey, so what about the pricing? If I sp- I don't want to spend this much, I don't want to have to buy shit over again, and I'll get into details of that. But the one quote that summed up the entire interview was, if I fired up a video game right now and showed you the emotes, you would throw money at the screen. In <laughs> other words, you would, you're going to fucking buy it regardless. It could be me farting on a snare drum, and you're going to fucking buy it. Dude, I ain't farting on no snare drum. <laughs> but it, it, it would, the arrogance of... Of Luke oh, Smith yeah. during this interview, we can we can release whatever the fuck it. we want, and the dumbasses will keep giving us money for it because we're Bungie and we make a fucking Destiny. Now there's a couple that pissed a lot of people off, but also what uh, the pricing itself was also pissing people off. That's why these questions are being asked. First off, uh, the thinking the Taken King is going to be base cost forty bucks. Yeah, that's high, but okay, it is more than your standard twenty dollar expansion pack that people were willing to pay earlier. I'm willing to let that go. Then they had the Legendary Edition, which came with the Destiny-based game, the two expansions, and the Taken King. And that was all for 60 bucks, 20 bucks more than the expansion itself. That's now, a way better deal. That is a way better deal. But people who already owned the game in original expansions saw this as a slight saying, hey, why are they only paying a little bit more for this? Why, why are they essentially in their minds paying 20 bucks for this when we have to pay 40 bucks for this? I get the rage over it but it's a fallacy because destiny and the two expansions are older games by the time this game comes out their price is not what they were when it launched it's cheaper it that's just one of those things hey prices drop after you buy it it doesn't stay 60 bucks forever can you get Warlords destiny and or... the other expansions for 20 bucks right now i'm sorry Warlords... was that? david first and then sean can you get the base game and the other two expansions for 20 dollars right now no no and you get it for but thirty dollars right now. They also don't bundle it up though either. This is a bundle. There, that's one of the sales that you get a discount for buying it all together. I, I like, understand the concept. Yeah, I, I I think that's a little bit of a fallacious argument that the people are making are upset over this. They can price that as what they want. Uh, when Warlords Warlords of Draenor right now is still like forty bucks, I think. Actually, it came out like at sixty. I think it did come out at sixty. Uh, but everything else you can get you can get literally the entire game. For five dollars. Before yeah, that, no, I, I so I, I, it's been like this for ever. Quest, the first ever quest was the same way. So like, the argument about this is is, is not good because every MMO has been like this. It's just people on consoles are finally like this is like the first time people on consoles have had an MMO based game like this that this has happened with like big yeah. expansions. We're PC gamers, so I guess we're a little bit used to it. I, I just feel this is that part of this whole thing feels a little bit overblown to me. The part that doesn't feel overblown to me is that they have this super collector's edition, which let me bring up right here what it looks like. And this is selling for 80 bucks in America. Fancy. Now it comes with all this shit here, including some exclusive emotes and shaders and all that, that if the people who already own the game want, they have to buy this as well as Destiny, all, all the expansions and the base game itself over again. That's fucked up. Because that is a slap in the face to people who have had the game since day one. Mm-hmm. 80 bucks to get everything. Yeah. There's, no, there's no upgrade anything. No. Well, well not yet. Uh, that is kind of a slap in the face because if you bought it day one and you're a huge fan of Destiny and then you're told, oh, you have to buy the game itself again and all these expansions you already own again just to get this fucking shader and a couple emotes that's bullshit it's not yeah. like the whole 
new people get it for 60 and you have to pay 40 for it thing because you're not rebuying old content over again. This is forcing you to buy content you already have. Mm -hmm. in, now, this is where in other MMOs you're rewarded for the longer you play the game. Yeah, because... I, I, I don't I can't think of a single e, uh, MMO that went oh new people you get this pet for free when everyone else has had the game forever well how many how many other games released the legendary edition with like the third expansion like that's yeah yeah that only is the collector's weird. edition is the first one you buy that comes with all this crazy shit yeah that and that's having that can get you other extra stuff later but well usually when it's done like that. In like World of Warcraft, every expansion has a collector's edition, but it and like that will yeah, come with like a special itself, pet. Though. No, some like some of them actually came with pets and stuff like that. But pets you can buy on their website for like two dollars yeah. rather than buying the entire thing to get it. In addition, those collector's editions for like World, say World of Warcraft Cataclysm, they all have their own collector's edition. It didn't come with the base game or anything else in there either. They yeah, had to no. rebuy over again, and they didn't factor those costs into it either. So it'd be like if if what they did right now was actually you can get the base expansion, the new expansion for forty dollars, but then get the expansion plus all this new shit for sixty dollars. Yes, but not rebuy the old game. And, and right. long story short, this pissed a lot of people off because the whole thing is just contrived. Luke Smith came off as a total fucking dick during the interview. Well, no, because it, the the main thing is, is that there's there's all these prices and the prices it's a little ass nine, right? Yeah, it's kind of fucked up. But the way he talked about it was such a huge slap in the face yes. to everybody that likes it, this game because it, it wasn't let me let me talk about the fact that you guys are going to buy this shit let's let's just i'm, I'm going to show you things and you're going to be ecstatic and and the entire article when you're reading his responses to these questions he's just dismissive yes it's like oh no people are going to buy it oh the content is totally there it's totally worth 80 dollars to buy these two little things if you already own everything else yeah, yes. no, no, what? it's not. You're asking for me to essentially pay forty bucks, and that's what because the the taking game itself is forty bucks. You're asking for me to pay another forty bucks to get all the little tchotchke shit and the extra like pets and stuff, or uh, shaders and uh, emotes. Emotes. No. Fuck your shaders. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Fuck that. Now, it it. <laughs> Here's the thing. If they wouldn't have had this interview, this wouldn't have been such a big deal, I don't think. People would still be upset about it because there was always grumbling about how expensive it was. But this interview just threw gasoline on the fire. Oh, yeah. He, he kind of ruined everything for him. Like, with this being the, the PR, after everyone's complaining about pricing, this is the next thing you hear from Bungie. Yeah. It's kind of an issue, and you're probably going to bring it up, but I was going to talk about just all of the, the Twitter feed directly related to this interview of people like well i'm done with this game yeah and there was quite a lot of it from an established fan base and and i mean it's the internet obviously everyone's gonna complain about everything and tons of people are probably gonna buy shit anyway and all that's false courage but it's it's still interesting to see how much of a shit show he managed to create with you know three lines and this definitely sounds like one of those things where Luke Smith was under marching orders from a PR person to say, you can't talk about this, you have to answer this in this way. And they put so many locks on him that he couldn't reveal things that might have calmed the uh, internet down. Because he kept being vague about what day one people would have. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm pretty sure he knew what they would get, but he couldn't say anything about it because of PR shit. Because they always have a rep like whispering in their ear, no, we can't talk about that, no, we can't say that. So if you can't throw the people a bone and all they get is is bullshit it's going to create just this rage and when you're evasive about it and don't give any answers about it it's just going to piss people off even more but anyways all of this went by and a couple days later it was so and then everything was smoothed out right and everything was good yeah uh, it's <clears throat> a little bit better uh bungie posted on their official forums with Luke Smith come, uh, giving an opening statement saying, hey, I look like an asshat. I'm sorry. Here are some plans. We're listening to your feedback, and we're thinking of making you have all this exclusive stuff with a $20 upgrade, i.e. you buy the Taken King for 40 bucks, and then for 20 bucks extra, you can get the stuff that's in the, collector, the, the Legendary Edition. It was a weird... Price point balance. Yeah, still still expensive in my book, but at least this makes sense to me. This seems 
fair. It, in quotes. it falls in line with or how fair. expensive everything else is. Yes. Uh, that way you have you're selling the stuff and not making people buy something they already have over again to get it. And that's just one part of all this. <laughs> a second part of this was remember how we talked about a few weeks back the Red Bull Activision deal with uh, the Taken King, how they're going to start. Well, that's how out. the entire game was leaked, if you remember. Yes, was those yep. Red Bull flyers that Red talked Bull. about the upcoming Spanish expansion. Now, when I saw that, I thought it was just a contest, like get the Red Bull and the Mark Can, sign up for a newsletter, and a hundred people win the game for free. One grand prize will be like the Xbox. There might be little promotional skins and pets, which if you had to add that to Red Bull, I'm fine with that too. That's People might not like it, but hey, that's at least something that's not game-changing, and it doesn't offend my sensibilities when it comes to your weird making me buy something over again thing. But that's not what they did with this Red Bull thing. What they did with this Red Bull thing was they specifically tied an exclusive quest to it so they are literally selling content in the game out from the taken king and forcing to buy red bull if you want the complete experience sweet yeah what if you like rockstar well you're fucked until january 1st because of next year because that's when apparently comes available for everyone but that's my, that's, that's one of such those. a huge window that's yeah. fucking hilarious that's big that's three months uh, when, from when the game comes out to when you can play it for free, or four, uh, September, like October, November, Bull. December, four months. Sean, you like Red Bull. Awesome. I like Red Bull. <laughs> uh, here's my problem with that too: is now once again you're taking chunks of the game out and selling it separately. So you have an expansion pack, which is already an add-on to a game for forty bucks, and then you take a chunk out of the expansion pack and force people to fucking track down Red Bull and buy that to get a mission chain on there. No. <laughs> I, I have nothing else to say than no. Okay, I got this. Bungie, stop it. That's a bad Bungie. All right. Well, All right. what do you expect? They ruined a great game franchise, and it took them like completely doing an exodus from it for it to get good again to a game and a half later. You're talking about so, Halo at this point. Yes, I am. It's so, just... like... I, for a game company I used to hold with such high regards when they did... Uh, even Marathon was a great game. And then Halo, I mean, was a game changer Marathon for the console shooters and stuff like that. And then Halo 2, as much as I didn't like it, was a really big seller and a lot of people loved that game. And then Halo 3, even people who liked Halo were like, you're getting kind of off plan here. What are you doing? So even Microsoft was like, you're cut from the team. It's just it the, the whole thing is just a mess, and I guarantee you, the people at Bungie are saying thank God Warner Brothers fucked up so hard because it kind of blew this completely out of the water. Because well, everyone the doing the same thing. Everyone focused on Warner Brothers fuck up. I don't think you can refund Destiny at this point because this isn't a new game. The people yeah, that have it yeah. have it. I'm you gonna send yeah. it back. No, but it's just. The whole messaging behind this is so fucking messy, and it's just, it's it's bad. It, it's bad news all around. So yeah, the two biggest stories of last week were companies doing horrible fucked up things and then being forced to apologize for it. Mainly because everybody's at mad all the time at this point. We've kind of hit that stage where if things aren't releasing properly, people are getting really fucking pissed about it because it's been happening so much for the last two years. Yes, and, and I, it's I, kind of an outrageous mass amount. at this point. Yeah, we're we're hitting that wall where there was still that period of time for a little while where people would just buy shit, pre-orders, buy shit, pre-orders, buy shit, whatever it comes out a little shitty. People will play it anyway, wait for it to get patched, and keep going with it. Um, the Bethesda effect. You know, yeah, <laughs> have a couple issues, but they're going to get ironed out. But you know, until what? At the least issues Bethesda, far glitches, more severe. At least with Bethesda's glitches, they're kind of like the cute. Oh, hey, look at that! This dude's walking in midair. They're kind of funny. Like the glitches themselves are entertaining in Bethesda games. Yeah, but then you have just completely game-breaking issues. I mean, I we hate on Ubisoft often, but I'm going to go back to Unity and the mess of that game. Um, I mean, there's there's other games that have released recently, and I think we'll get into one of them a little bit later that I wanted to talk about, that they're just making weird decisions based on the fact that they assume everyone's going to throw money at them anyway. Also, the glitches 
in Bethesda games, that game is so big, it takes millions of players to find these glitches eventually. I, I'm not willing to let the size of the game be an excuse for, for it, shoddy code. My, my point is it's harder to beta, t- beta test those glitches than yeah. it is starting up a game and going, holy shit, this isn't running at 30 frames for, se- or for 60 frames per second. I'm definitely yeah, a little bit more thing willing to let that intro. go because of that. Yeah. Because yeah, you know what I never had issues with? The intro to Skyrim. Exactly. Riding on a cart. Yeah, that, that whole scene was smooth as shit. Yes. I might have issues casting Fireball underwater against the mud crab in a certain location. But that's about it. You know what I do then? Avoid that location until about a week later. And it's it, like I said, when when Bethesda glitches out, they're usually humorous or kind of like, oh, that that's funny. Let me reload the game and it should be fine. Uh, Aaron Porter in chat is saying the Red Bull thing is worse than we think. Only the U- only in the U.S. for the Red Bull thing, and it says Seven Eleven WalMarts only. However, uh, I do know it's exclusively at 7-Eleven until July. After that, it should start showing up in other stores. I don't know if it's only 7-Eleven and Walmart at that point, but 7-Eleven has exclusivity on those Red Bull cans other until stores. July. Yeah, it could be more than just Walmart. But yeah, it does. Th- there Target. are some even more things on that. So uh, enough bad news. Let's talk about some good stuff that happened. Last week at uh, MetroCon, Nolan Wharf was at a panel. Oh, and, dude. Yeah, Nolan Wharf's a boss. Uh, that if that you, was my character's voice in Saints Row. Yeah, if you've played a video game in the past f- five years, there's a good chance you've played something with Nolan North in it because the guy is prolific as hell. Uh, He's like tr- um, Trevor Baker now. Is that his name? Well, Nolan North was Troy Baker before Troy Baker Troy became Baker. Troy Baker. Yeah. Troy Baker is a new Nolan of video game world. Uh, Nolan North, uh, most famously probably for Uncharted. He's the voice of Nathan Drake. Drake. Uh, he was dude, in... Yeah, he he is Deadpool in the Deadpool video game. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else he has been in. I'm like John. He was blank my now. specific created character in Saints Row Four. Yes, in fact, because uh, you have male, female, and know the Nolan North. Yes, you could pick Nolan North as that. He's he's in a lot of shit. Uh, let's just be frank with it. He's in multiple things, and he was given a panel, or he was uh, at a panel at, like I said, MetroCon. And he actually leaked a couple of things, or leaked in quotes, because we don't, we can't confirm this or not. But he did two things. One, he just let slip that a Last of Us Two is in the works. Why not? Yeah. I mean, we all kind of assumed that, but we never had any like confirmation from anyone. And he would be close to the source, considering all of his work with Naughty Dog. And he was actually in The Last of Us. He played, uh, can't remember his name, but he was the guy that was leading the town of cannibals. Spoilers for a game that's two years old now. Oh, um, the, y- yeah, 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 I can't the, remember his the name. The one that was the like guy, obsessed John, with Ellie. John Cannibal. Yeah. Yeah, John Q. Cannibal. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> which, by the way, led up to one of the greatest scenes in video game history, which if you haven't played the game, like Steven said, it's two years old, get over it. Dude, where I know the puts, part where you're talking about. It's where you dude. grab the knife out of your chest, right? And you throw it at the dude next to the helicopter. That that's Call of Duty, son. You're you're a fucking moron. <laughs> that was the point. Continue. When he shoves that knife in the dude's kneecap and gets him to point out on the map <laughs> where they're at, and then he kills him, and the dude's like, "Whoa!" He told him the truth, and he's like, "Yeah, I believed him," and then kills him too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a yeah. That 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 moment was so great. I'm trying to remember his name. I want to say it was like uh, Paul or Charlie. It was something just very benign. Oh, yeah, dude. And, John yeah. Q. Cannibal. We already forgot this guy. Come on. But not only did he like let slip that Last of Us Two is in the works, but he was also talking about Amy Henning. So Amy Henning was the lead writer to Uncharted. She left Visceral on murky terms we don't know if it was good or not and joined visceral to work on their upcoming star wars game and he was quoted as saying if you're a big fan of amy henning with her styles of stories the big thing about her is that she's gone to ea and is going to reboot a brand new star wars franchise in the style of uncharted and i happen to know a lot about it and it's going to be awesome yep sean what do you think that means spiritual successor if not 1313 i absolutely agree when you say you're rebooting a brand new franchise. This means that this is thirteen thirteen that they took the groundwork to that and completely redid it. Wait, mm-hmm. what was thirteen thirteen again? Thirteen thirteen oh. was PG, an R rated Star Wars video game set in the slums as bounty hunter. Okay, now that's one idea. The other idea is a new Kotor. No, Visceral I... wouldn't be working on that. That, and I don't think they would get 
uh, Amy to do the story to a game like no. that. Visceral's an it's, action studio. They, they're most yeah. famous for Dead Space and uh, Dante's Inferno, as well as, I want to say, the most recent Battlefield, Battlefield Hardline. I think Visceral Studio. Dude, it's going to be a that. giant action game version of KOTOR. It's a reboot. No, this is That'd be th- terrible. rebooting a new IP. That's the key there. So it won't be anything like Coder or anything. It won't be anything already also, established. Also, BioWare still owns the rights to Knights of the Republic, I believe. Yeah, and EA owns no. BioWare. So that's all one Evan company. Rising 2. No. This is this is <laughs> smart money is that this is what 1313 has turned into. I think all 1314. Uh but yeah, I'm excited for this. Uh I am down for an Hi. uncharted in the Star Wars uh a Star Wars Uncharted. I love Amy Henning's work all the way back to uh Legacy of Kane. Mm. This is I didn't know she, she did that. One? Yeah, Amy Henning is the brainchild behind Legacy of Kane. Great. That's game. awesome. Did she do the Soul Weaver series too? I can't remember when she left Crystal Dynamics, or was it Silicon Knights that did that? Silicon Knights? I can't remember when she joined Naughty Dog, but I want to say she did... I know for a fact she did Legacy of Cain, the very first one. The first one. one. She might have had a hand in Soul Reaver and Soul Reaver 2, but I'm not positive. I can't remember. I think she did. Great series. Yeah, no, uh, fantastic series. A bunch of problems with it, but the voice, by far one of the best voice acted series out there. But yeah, Yeah. so in a two-hour talk, he leaked Last of Us 2 and leaked that... 1313 has essentially been rebooted just not in so many words yeah and actually I, this is going on a tangent but since we brought up Knights of the Republic I wonder how Bioware did the whole Star Wars work around when they got sold to Disney with um, Old Republic it yeah, kind of popped they, in my head they did nuke all the canon to it well, I not just know. that, but, like, they canceled everything, and didn't, like, they pretty much shut down, like, every Star Wars game ever? <laughs> so, I don't know, like, Bioware must have had, had worked something out with Disney. There has to be something Which makes me there. believe that now that Disney owns it, that Knights of the Republic 3 could still happen. No, I, I, my gut tells me that franchise is MMO-bound for at least another five years. I, I don't think you'll ever see a RPG console, like, a, a you... traditional Knights of the Republic for at least another five years. You could still get um, Obsidian to do it, though, like they did Knights of the Republic 2. So, like, you could still do Old Republic and have a different company. Yeah, you could do it. I don't think they're going to. David? I found out something very important about Amy Henning. What is that? So, when she was at uh, Naughty Dog originally, she also worked on Jack and Daxter. Yes, she was responsible for Jack and Daxter. uh... Her debut was the Super Nintendo Classic. Michael Jordan, Chaos in the Windy City. <laughs> Hold on, what was her role in that? <laughs> she was the designer. Like, <laughs> oh, that's man. so clutch. If I that's ever, the greatest thing I've ever read. If I ever run into her, I want her to sign a copy of that. Right? Like, she's responsible for all this great stuff. I want her to sign a copy of <laughs> Michael Jordan in the Windy City. <laughs> right? Hey, oh, this game changed my George life. George Clooney was in Return of the Kill of Tomatoes. We all got to start somewhere. Yeah, why not? It's true. Uh, other news. Going ahead. Well, internet on. things. There was a video released last week that I thought was really cool, and it's from the fine folks at Rocket Jump. And it is essentially, uh, for those who don't know, Rocket Jump is Freddie Wong's partner studio. I don't know if he owns it or if he's affiliated with them, but they also do video game high school. But they released this video here that you're seeing right now, and it's what it looks like to be a colonist on a planet when the Zerg hit it. It's good, too. It's so great. Also, it's... why are they on Tatooine? <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking more like, why are they in New Mexico? Eh, whatever. <laughs> Just look at, their, look at that. That's, dude, that's Luke Skywalker. Two, that's yeah, no, he is definitely rocking the Luke Skywalker vibe. I will give him that much. Yep. But yeah, I just love how it's, you see the Zerg swarm coming, you see the fucking command center and all the barracks taken off, which means you're fucked. <laughs> and oh, yeah. It's just, it's a very unique take on the starcraft mythos because you never really see it through the eyes of a peon you always see it through the eyes of like the big bad space marine or military command or like protoss and zerg which are their own things entirely but also, never i don't from... want to spoil the ending but it's great yeah the ending is great uh, i'll be cutting off here soon in fact i'm gonna go ahead and switch over right now but yeah go take a look at that uh it just makes me kind of want to see a f- live action starcraft movie no not or a tv show 
They're making a they're making a yeah, TV series. That would be much better. I want to see it on TV. I don't want to see it in the theaters because there's a lot there that you really can't pack into a two hour movie. Twitch which is, the original. Which is my biggest concern about the upcoming Warcraft movie. There's a lot there, and unless the movie is like four hours long, it's going to just feel rushed. I'm gonna give you one reason one why thing. I'm excited for the Warcraft movie. Do you know Duncan who's directing Jones? it? And Steven, would you like to enlighten the crowd who Duncan Jones is? Duncan Jones is David Bowie's son. You fuck right he is. He's also the man behind uh, Moon and Time Code and what else did he do? Can't remember. A few things. But yeah. Moon is awesome, by the way, if you haven't seen it. David, what kind it's of It's in the moon. There? Moon, it's in the sky. It's great. Yes, it is. You were about oh, to say we can that. Talk about, we're going to talk about this thing that I was going to talk about earlier. What thing we were going to talk about earlier. So we were having the whole conversation about games that release really shittily <laughs> and how there's this big resurgence on games that come out and they're just fucking atrocious and it's a complete joke and no one knows why the hell it happened. Yeah, I'm talking about Drive Club. Y'all remember Drive, Drive Club for PS4? Drive Club remember is how a it was, fuck. Remember how it was totally a launch game for the PS4? Oh, no, we got delayed because we have some issues. Okay, so you remember how it came out and it was super smooth? Oh, wait, that's right. The servers were shit. No one could play it. Like... SimCity 4 level is unplayable. Yeah. In fact, the servers were so shit that they promised a, for people who had PlayStation Plus, would get Drive Club for free. And when the game came out, they didn't give that game out. Well, they would get a limited version of it for free, I should say. Well, no, because that was actually part of the original pitch is that they wanted the Drive Club to come out with the PS Plus version, and they're all going to work together because the entire point of the game is social. It's like yes. you build teams and you get friends, and you guys all band together, and you're racing for points, and blah, 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 and it's this big social racing game. But when there's no online features, and your game isn't like the greatest racing game of all time, it's just a pretty decent-looking one, there's kind of issues. Yeah, they, they, they actually got so bad that they were they were heading the server set for a one-in, one-out. Like, you could get on the server if you were next in line and somebody else logged out. <laughs> it was but bad. David, so mm-hmm. you're a resident driving game fan where would you rank drive club on your your driving game list somewhere near test drive unlimited this is that, that, that bad. means nothing to me <laughs> <laughs> okay let's let's apply this the best to part music. of test drive unlimited is the fact that the loading screen was pong if if zero is i can't drive 55 and 10 is danger zone where would this game fall <laughs> that you okay, Steven, you just gave examples of ten and ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you, but I think it's your brain. Um I'm gonna go Ow, with dude. anything by Michael Bolton. Oh. Okay, that's pretty <laughs> shitty. <laughs> no, it's just it it was a clusterfuck and they and they knew it was and it was really funny because it was so bad they're like, so the PS plus version, that's on hold indefinitely. Yeah, it was originally supposed to be a launch game. Then it finally launched last year, October. For, but mm-hmm. not the PlayStation Plus version because their servers had so many problems. Sony said, we're going to delay this to give the server load more breathing room like you were talking about. And, mm-hmm. well, finally, Lo the and PlayStation ver- Plus version of this has come out uh, in a blog post on the Sony blog by Shoei Yoshida himself, which just shows how much of a how bad they feel about this because you don't roll him out for apologies. Essentially, says, hey, it's out today. We know we had some problems getting this out. Uh, you can take a look at it here. The problem is no one fucking cares anymore. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. You have to be more specific because the PS Plus version of Drive Hub finally came out. I'm sorry. The offline-only single-player edition of Drive Club Plus just came out. Oh. Because they still don't actually have server support because they're worried that putting the PS Plus members onto the servers are going to crash them again and cause all of the launch issues over. I so they're actually going to release that people there. onto the servers in small batches. So what you're saying is it's still not fully out yet? Nope. It's not everybody can play it online. This was supposed to be a launch game. Yep. Oh, it's hilarious. man. It's just it's just a buggy mess. and Because this game was supposed to be... It was supposed to be really forward-leaking. Because... You guys know about the Gran Turismo series, at least, like the the PlayStation yeah. flagship racing game series. Those games were outrageously popular, but they were all released like every five years, and that just doesn't really work. Yeah, this nowadays. was originally supposed to be something to buffer in that that time well, frame. Because when when Drive Club came out, it was supposed to be almost like episodic, where there was going to be new content, new cars, new tracks once a month, and they actually had content releases planned 
I mean, into into late this year, and instead it was just such a shit show that no one cares about it, so nobody plays it. So none of that stuff even really. I don't know if it even actually came out or what even happened to their timeline, but it's it's kind of funny. So much went horribly wrong this week for video games. Yeah, I feel bad. <clears throat> Sean, anything you want to add to it before we jump to our next topic? Nope. Nope. Danger zone. Well, <laughs> just the last bit. The, the patch it, the ship it and patch it later mentality is, is got to go. It's actually doing a lot of harm now, I think, to the video game industry. And I think that it... it it's palpable how pissed off people are. But something a little bit lighter hearted again. Uh, have you guys seen this dude make the Large Rogers pixel art? Yes. So this YouTube user by the name of Tholar Tholarian. Uh, once again, his link will be down in the bottom below if you're watching this live. Yeah. If you're watching he this comes from YouTube, Skyrim. Say. He comes from Skyrim. He's he's a Nord. Yeah. Uh, he's something the Earls. With yeah. Minecraft, he built the biggest pixel art in the world. And it was so big, in fact, that he had to use a third-party software device to show the entire map because Minecraft wouldn't load all of it. But here it is. This is what it looks like. Now, for those of you who don't believe, this is a third-party program. I don't remember its name right now. But this is essentially what the Minecraft map looks like. It's over a million blocks big, done in hand without any help, and took him over 23 and a half weeks. Now, as you can see, as he zooms in, you can see where there's like redstone in the eyes, and we got like some snow and basic grass everywhere. This is impressive. I, I, I can't get over how cool this is. It's a little ridiculous because the start of the video actually shows him placing blocks up in the corner, and he's like, and I just yeah. finished it. And then you actually see him start flying around the map, and... It's Minecraft, so it's trying to load all the chunks, and you see like bits and pieces of the map in single block form as he's like yeah. flying around stuff. So it's pretty entertaining. Yeah, uh, man, go on him. Give him a look out once again. Tholar Tholarian. Well, the link will be down in the description on the YouTube page. But that's a lot of time and effort. It's over a million blocks large. Big. Also, I have to officially large. apologize about our last topic of conversation, like my drive club. What I neglected to make a cold trickle reference, and I apologize. <laughs> okay. Dick Trickle. Your, cold, uh, cold Trickle is Tom Cruise from uh, Days of Thunder. I will. <laughs> thank you. I had no <laughs> idea what you were talking about. I was just going to go with it. I expect I, you I will take like your ready. life in the worst uh, way possible. I totally forgot about Robin's it. Racing. I, wanted to make, I wanted to make a Days of Thunder reference, and I fucked it up. So I'm sorry. All right. Before we uh, get into new releases, we have a couple of quick hits here. First, uh, a couple hours ago, Take Two registered several domain names, sent in at the release of Mafia Three. Essentially, it's a bunch of things like Mafia Three dot com, Mafia Room Number Three dot com, Mafia Three Game dot com. So expect a Mafia Three game announcement soon, if not soon <laughs> in the next couple months. Uh, expect a Mafia Four game soon. It's all right. It's a passable tactical shooter in the vein of Jagged Alliance. That's what it most reminds me of. Now, uh, one more thing, we're going to talk about Hitbox real quick. Now, David. You brought mm. to attention an interview from VentureBeat where Martin Klimsha, chief executive of Hitbox. Klimsha. 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 Yes. Okay. Revealed that Hitbox is going to be streaming in 4K resolution at 60 frames a second before the end of the year. Yeah. So Hitbox, if you guys don't know what it is, is like a <coughs> YouTube, Twitch competitor. But these guys are new and they actually have a, an all right following. I think there's five or six million people that, that watch it right now. And. The whole point is they're using higher resolution stuff, so just higher quality servers and everything so that people can play games 60 frames a second and they're working on up to 4K resolution and stream and actually have it run well. And it's all running in HTML5, so it's all really clean. They were talking about a, a League of Legends service, actually, where you can be watching someone stream League of Legends. You can click stuff in chat and it'll bring you to like that player's character and rune page so you can see like how they're playing and what they're doing and all this stuff and it's got a lot of really neat features built into it but it's kind of funny that they just decided to say oh yeah we're coming for you guys and, and we're throwing down um the funniest part for me in the article was when he talked about how youtube and twitch are coke and pepsi but they're red bull yeah no i did see that it was kind of humorous oh you'll be able to see that article down in the links below uh 4k is the future i, I yep. believe in it like I look at things like VR, for example, I can go, maybe. Look at HoloLens, eh, maybe. 4K, though, I'm sold on that being in the future. It's accessible. Yeah. It makes sense to people. It's very, e I don't want to say it's cheap, because it's not cheap <clears throat> yet, but it will be in another two years. It's going to be very accessible and easy to get into. So it actually is cheap, relatively, because I, 
I sell 4K TVs, so I have to know this shit. Um, so plasmas, when they first came out, like 1080, were about $6,000 for a 65-inch TV. 4K TVs, which are much higher resolutions, it's four times the resolution, sell right now. A 65-inch TV at like a high panel resolution one, like a triluminous color one, sells for 2500 It's almost a third of the price when plasmas came out initially. So, so like 4K is actually a year cheaper. From now. Mm-hmm. Yes. A year from now, it'll be under 1000 bucks. And Mo- yeah. Like, yeah. I, I can so, I mean, s- this is going to take off. It's yeah. just a matter and, of when it's going to happen. And something that 1080 TVs don't do that 4K TVs do is they upscale the resolutions below them. So 4K will actually bring up 1080 and 720 to higher resolutions. 1080 TVs never did that and never will do that. So act like even though there's not 4K content yet, 4K TVs and 4K displays will actually up your resolution without you having to have 4K content. Well, there you go. Bullshit, yeah. bro. It's 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 it's. I'm glad to see Hitbox is getting on this. Uh, you would be fools, though, to think that the, both Twitch and YouTube aren't about to release something on this. Well, the, the main thing was they're talking about the fact that with um, Twitch, they're all it's like a ten year old program. They're running on old servers, so they have a lot more like legacy things that are plugged in that they need to upgrade. And they're they're brand new like startups, so they got a bunch of new. Yeah, shit, they got so. that Amazon money, so they're going to have a small leg up right now. Like they're going to have a window, and depending on how much traffic they can pull to their site while they have this window it's it's gonna see how they make your swim i absolutely agree uh that does it for the news of the week let's go ahead and talk about new releases uh not much uh week after e3 of course everyone's kind of taking a breath there's really only run new that's ronin which was already on early access and its full pc release is tomorrow i'll more than likely be streaming that tomorrow around noon you can check us here i'll be tweeting out when that goes up uh and that's it of note that's it for new releases. So that brings us to the final segment of the show, League of Legends news. And once again, not much happened. Sean, why don't you go ahead and break down about this Renegades business. So I talked about Renegades last week and how they got into the LCS in a challenger scene. Um, and there's a few familiar faces on the team, players being uh, Crumbs in the jungle and Alex each in mid lane and Monte Cristo being a co-owner. Well, their other owner, um, Chris... I can't remember what his in-game name is. Basically got banned until 2017 from being an Omer from uh, any competitive team right now because of poaching. So basically what it, poaching is is when you talk to players under contract to see what they're going to do when their contract ends in hopes to maybe get them on your team. Uh, and his name is uh, Chris Badawi. Yes. I can't remember what his in-game name is, though. Um, so the problem with a lot of that stuff is in normal sports like basketball, football, hockey, or whatever, players have a down period in between seasons to negotiate new contracts and have a free agency period. In League of Legends, you go straight from one split to the next split, and there is no downtime in between two splits. You can't negotiate contracts. It's it basically fucking the players over because they don't know what the other options are. Say the team that has you. There are rules right in now. place that keep people from talking to other teams, except during downtime. And there's no downtime, so essentially they sign a contract with a team. They're locked with that team unless they decide just completely skip a season. Yeah, and what happens is you have to get permission from the team to talk to a player. Like, what team in the right mind is going to give some permission to try to poach away a player, basically, unless they don't want that player to begin with, anyways. So, what's happening is. What if you're like you're, you're a player and you're getting paid this much money, but actually you should be getting paid this much money. Another team wants to offer you it, but your team won't allow you to talk to them, so you don't know the option even exists. So it it's it a kind really of sucks weird that time. series of rules because it, it kind of flies against the way a lot of other sports are. Because I mean, if you everything in like football recruiting and the entire open season and everything when everyone's making deals and making trades and everything else like that that point in time <laughs> doesn't really happen. So make it right like, yeah, to make it kind of timely, the NBA free agency starts June, uh, July 1st at midnight. So right when the clock hits midnight, July 1st, people can start signing contracts to other teams and talk to other uh, other teams. Right now, they can't do anything until that day. But they have until the season to have that free agency time period and even past it. Players basically, like, 
with teams, there's only like two days they can do this. So they really need to split the season so players have more options to talk to other teams. Because in also in professional sports, you can play a lot longer. Like it's weird because the physical things you do, like getting your ass beat every day in football, your career is actually longer than it is in esports. You which also never esports careers like eight months or something like that. You also do kind of start getting to the re- restraint of trade stuff here too. Uh, why it might not necessarily be meeting that burden of proof yet i wouldn't be surprised if this keeps going on and someone's determined if you can actually see lawsuits coming up because it is restraint of trade yeah and uh, so but like th- that's the thing i'd like to brought the renegades team itself too is like they're they're allowing one of the first things monty brought up was if anyone ever asked to get permission to their players to talk to them it's an open door policy like you can talk to any of our players and we won't um blame like we won't consider you for poaching we won't like uh we're not going to penalize you for that correct so they won't report to riot or like they're basically they're basically giving anyone permission at any time because it's their 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 whole ownership thing is about players interest and riots finally like the riots getting better at this which is nice to see but there's still some rules they need to fix they need to give more players more time in between splits which they basically they need to separate the summer and, and spring splits apart by like three weeks because they, they have like a mid-season tournament now, which is awesome. But that also affects teams too, because you have to be under contract to play in said tournament. <laughs> so like now there's, it's basically spring split, week MSI, week summer split. So you have two weeks if you're not on an MSI team, which is top one in any region. And then you have basically a week if you're on MSI tournament team right now. Which is not enough to negotiate contract talks or anything like that. So that's the the biggest problem to get out of this, not the actual ban. Fair enough. Anything you want to add to this before we wrap it up, or is that going to do it for you? Uh, for esports, yes. Okay. David, uh, we've reached that time where we say our goodbyes. Is there anything you want to say before we call it? Um, I had something for this. God damn it, WB. Fair enough. It was. Sean, anything final you want to say? Since we just got out of E three, what games ten years from or ten years from now, what games would you want to see like remade and stuff like that at E three? Like, what's our Final Fantasy seven in ten years? Ooh, I'm gonna have to come back to you next week. Yeah, definitely gonna have to come back to that. <laughs> That's a good one. All right, well, I'll still this... be waiting for Chrono Trigger. <laughs> This has been <laughs> Game Points. Uh, if you're joining us live in chat, thanks for watching us. We appreciate it. We do stream on Twitch TV slash Game Points every Monday at 8 p.m. Pacific, Pacific Standard Time, unless something goes horribly wrong and we have to delay it or cancel it that week. You can also find old shows at YouTube. Just type in Game Points, one word, PC, and we pop up right there. And you take a look at most of our old shows unless something technical can't they from posting it you can follow the show at twitter at game points pc will notify you when we go live and when the show goes up on youtube you can email us at game points pc at gmail.com send us any tips hints news bits questions if you just want to say hey knock yourself out we'll answer everything and more or less read everything on the air you can give us a like over at facebook at game points podcast go over there click the like button would appreciate it you can also subscribe to youtube if i didn't get that in there you can follow us all individually i was of course your host Stephen brown you can follow me at capitalist pig 21 you can follow esports commentator sean brown down there at the disco underscore king you can also follow him on twitch when he streams at that same name just no underscore and across from him is david smith you can follow him at past life story though i wouldn't bother because he just got twitter because i told him to once again this has been game points i appreciate you watching us catch you next week and we are out of here